Hi everyone, and um, welcome to Unexpected Token, and today <clears throat> I'm going to do something that I have been saying that I'm going to do for like two weeks probably, so here we goes. Okay, so today we're going to learn about the magic of Apollo Link State, which is basically a way for you, like if you use Apollo and use GraphQL, you probably manage like half of the state, like the data and stuff, with Apollo. So. And then you have to go and install something else to handle like the, the UI and everything. Well, you actually don't anymore because now we have Apollo Link State. What Apollo Link State does is it basically, I need to stop saying basically, but it allows you to, um, it's basically like a GraphQL Redux. So you have local state. It's beautiful and it's perfect and we're gonna try it today. So I'm going to show you what I have so far. So on this side, you can see that I have like this. I'm not a master of CSS. I just imported tachyons and have like a shit ton of glasses everywhere. <laughs> like I really like tachyons. So I think it's a, a nice way of just, just to show, not to show the CSS. So I can do videos about CSS. So basically I have like, uh, this is all from the testing. I have a set of teams and uh, basically each team ended with a score. I watch a lot of soccer and as you can see like this is the team name team name and the score so this was nil nil this one for example uh, team a one by three nil and the idea is that you can create a new game and assign team names and set goals and when the game is finished basically it will come here so pretty straightforward and i know we could all do this with state but i didn't want to do a to-do app so you're stuck with this guys you're stuck with this this is the best idea that I could come up with that it was not a to-do app. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do, since we already have Apollo, uh, as you can see, I already have a new Apollo client link and I am testing it to uh, GraphQL. If you've never used GraphQL, use GraphQL. It's bloody amazing. And we need to install Apollo link because we need to link from two different things. So we need to link. So we need to, the Apollo client needs to link from an HTTP source and from a state source, like our state. Okay, so let's install two things. So let's come here and yarn add, and I'm gonna install Apollo. Does Apollo have, yeah. Apollo link and Apollo link state. Okay, so let this do its thing, Apollo link state, okay. Actually, I have pretty decent internet now, so it's good. Pretty good, okay, actually not that fast. There we go, we have Apollo Link State. And we have Apollo Link, obviously. Okay, so let me just get this out of the way. And let's import what we actually need. So the first thing that we usually do when it comes to Redux or any state management tool is that we create a default state. So that will be the first thing that I'm gonna do. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is create a default state. So before, or maybe after, you know, before this cache stays at the top, this goes at the bottom, and I'm gonna go const default state. And as of most GraphQL thingies, this needs to have a type name. And we also need to define, so default state, the idea is that you can have multiple objects in it. So the object that I want right now is only gonna deal with the current game. So I'm gonna create an object called current game, current game, and this will hold the state and like I was gonna say, like most GraphQL thing is, this has a type name. So let's first of all define the type name of this. So type name is equal to current game. And we also need to think what we need here. So what we need is the team A score, team B score, team A name, and team B name. So let's start with the defaults, that's what we have here. Okay, so that is reloading, but just forget about it. So team A score is going to default to zero, basically. And I'm going to copy and paste this and just add this. And team B score is also going to be zero. And then we need the names. So team A name is going to be team A. And I'm going to copy and paste this again. I, t I tell you, I honestly think that it's faster. And team B name is going to be team B. OK, so now we have a default state. And we need to actually start by defining it. Okay, so I mean, we need to get Apollo link. 
we need to get Apollo Link state and actually create a so it, basically what Apollo Link state is is I order component. So we need to get that I order component and pass it to cache. We pass it the defaults and then we create our mutations and our queries in it. So let's first thing let's import with um, with client state from Apollo Link state. This is the best thing that I've ever installed. This thing that are automatically like doesn't get you things. It's beautiful. I have three weather warnings. It's shitty weather in Portugal. It's not always summer like everyone thinks. So const state link. I'm gonna call this state link. And this is gonna be the high order function of with state. And the first thing that we need to pass it is the cache. So that we already defined because we need it right here. So actually don't need this because the cache is the cache. Then we need to define the defaults. So defaults is going to be default state. And then we basically need to define our mutations. So our resolvers are only for mutations. So for now, I'm just going to leave this blank and I'm going to come here and the link is going to be a bit different. So we also need to import Apollo link from Apollo link because we need two, two links ports. Um, we need to import Apollo link. Okay, Apollo client, and now it changes the link. There we go. A link from Apollo link. I'm just gonna put Apollo link state and then remove that. There we go. Beautiful. Apollo link, and now this needs to be so Apollo link that from, and we need to open, and not this, sorry, and it's an array, and then in this array. We pass it the two things that we need. So the first thing that we need is the state link, which is called state link, so it's fine. And then we need this, which is the new HTTP link that actually connects to GraphQL. So that was pretty standard, right? Okay. So first job. First job that we're going to do about this is just get the default state in order to show it. So the first thing that we actually need to do is show the default state in here. So I am right now, so let me go with team card. Team card, uh, actually it's in new page, uh, new page, new game. So this is just our core, hard coded, sorry. So the first thing that we need to do is to get the names out of our store. Okay, so uh, this works exactly how you'd expect. So. Uh, I need to come here to the new game and I am going to import GraphQL. Import GraphQ GraphQL. And I am also going to import Compose because we're going to need it later from uh, Apollo client. Okay. So now that we got this, we actually need to create the GraphQL thingy that we're going to use. So we need to query all of the games. We need to query the current game, sorry. Um, and now you're gonna see a little difference between what we technically use. So I get the all games one. So this is the all games that I have. And basically you query, you give it a name and you say all games. Okay, cool, sounds great. And now let's create the get current game that I obviously added. Exports, so I'm just gonna export defaults, uh, GQL. I'm gonna do this beautiful little thing. And then we're going to query. Okay, so pretty standard. So this automatically gives you the ability to query things. So as soon as you create a default state, you can query that default state. You don't have to worry about creating queries. I mean, you can create queries, but you get my, you, you, you get my, you get my thing, guys. So current game. So this is what we want to get from this query. And then we have to append client to it so that so that Apollo client act so that Apollo Apollo client actually knows that we're not trying to get this from the graph cool. We are trying to get this from the client side. So let's just return team a score. And uh, let's come here to the new game. And we're going to compose. Okay, so we're going to export default compose. Okay. And we're going to do this and this because this is a high order function. And we're going to call GraphQL. So GraphQL. And we're going to import 
that little beauty thing that we have there. So import uh, get current game current game from and I'm gonna go to back and I'm gonna go not back actually I'm gonna go to GraphQL GraphQL and I'm gonna go to get current game. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, this is this is this is that JS, so it's fine. Okay, for current game, and now we gotta run this GraphQL get current game. Okay, so let's let's just let's just run this and see what happens. Apollo client does not contain an export name compose. Apollo client because it's not Apollo client; it's React Apollo. That was very dumb. Sorry about that. So React Apollo. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so the first thing now that I think we should do is just like deconstruct the prop so we just don't get data. So to actually make sure that this is working. Uh, okay, so let's come and let's after here, let's pass it a second argument that is an object. And in here we want to access the props and we want to return something with them. So we also want to return an object. So let's just get this function ready. And what do we get back? So what do we get back? We want to deconstruct and get the data. And out of it, we want to get the current game. So current game. And that's it. So we want to get from the data. We want to extract the data and from it get the current game. And now, so let's press current game here. And now, just as simple as that, what's wrong here? Expect the consistent spacing. Okay, what is... What does that mean, man? What do you what do you mean? Oh, just got it. Okay. So he expects consistent spacing. Is this what he means? Okay. Got it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Hardest part of this. Okay, so now let's just test that this works. So in here I'm just gonna console the log and current game. Before I do that, I actually need to get it from the props. So const current game equals this that props. And let's just console that log that. And as you can see, we get team A score. Score. So let's get all the rest of that of that stuff, right? So let me come here to the index and we're gonna get team A, team B, team A name, and team B name. Current game, delete this, and get all of this. Beautiful. And now let's put all of that into place. So current game, and from the current game, I want to deconstruct all of this. Exactly, so I want to deconstruct, not this boy, I want to deconstruct this. So where is that? The current game. Yeah, I always think it's faster. So from current game, I want to deconstruct all of this, so get them semicolons in here. Get them semicolons in here, and I hope Prettier does this thing. Oh, this is because of the console.log. Okay. Pretty didn't do his thing, so I gotta do it for him. Because they're not being used. So I'm getting team A score. So in this case, goals is basically team A score. Team B score comes here to goals. And team A name, instead of team A, we're gonna change it to team a name and we're gonna do the same thing here so remove that copy this and put a little b in there and the page is gonna reload and it's gonna be like super not cool because you're gonna see the exact same thing safari i'm here okay that's cool what is this i have no idea but that is the best console that i've seen okay so you're not going to see any changes, so I'm just going to come here to the index.js and I'm going to change this to carry on. And the page should reload. And now we get carry on as the default name. So as you can see, it totally works. So next thing that we got to do is basically when you click goal, something should happen. Uh, I'm not an expert in this, but I think something should happen. Okay. So how do you want to do this? So the idea that I had of passing this is basically just create an update game, pass the index of the thing that you want to update and pass it the value. So in order to do that, we need to create a mutation. So let's come here to the app index 
I'm not very good with names or anything in general, but let's just stay with names. Okay, so now we need to create resolvers. So resolvers, open up them curly brackets, and we want to create mutations. So mutation. So the name that I want to give them my mutation, you can give it whatever you want, boy, is update game. What is wrong here? Extra space after. Okay, so update game. And what is this going to get? So, okay, so the first thing that this gets, we're just going to ignore. And then we also, we get all the values. So the values that we send in as the mutation. So I want to get the index and the value that I sent over. And the third parameter is the cache. I don't know why I said cache, but that's cool. Okay, and after this, we actually want to return something. So the first thing that we're just going to return is a console log, as, as usual, right? Uh, yeah, I'm missing the two dots here. Sorry about that. So console.log, and I want to console.log the index and the value. Okay, so let's create our GQL mutation, right? So let me go to update game. Right here, what is that? So update game, and we're going to create that mutation. So we're going to export default uh, GQL. You come over here and you're going to create a mutation and this mutation is going to be called update game update I don't I have no idea why I did that so update game this is going to take some params and it's going to run the update game mutation so update game mutation this is uppercase so the, no this is not uppercase why did I say this was uppercase so update game mutation it's also going to take some params and we want to return everything. So we're going to return team A score. Let me just copy this again. So update game. And we want to return everything. Oh, come on. That was not cool. No, I actually need to like do this thing. So update game. Need to come here. Do this. And there we go. So now we just need to pass it things. So what we're going to pass it is an index. So index. And this is going to be a string that is going to be mandatory. So string and mandatory. Cool. And we're also going to pass it a value. And this is also going to be a string and it's also going to be mandatory. And then here we basically need to pass the same thing. So we need to pass the index and the type is index and we need to pass the value and the type is value. Okay, cool. We all good? No, syntax error expected name found value. We're missing client here, but I don't think that's it. We're missing client here. Expected name found value. Expected name. Oh, there we go. Okay, so expected name. Oh, expected name found value. Oh, that's because I'm very dumb, guys. I'm sorry. So this needs to do this. Okay, cool. Awesome. Nothing is working. But it's something. So the first thing that we need to do is actually pop open the console, which is actually like really decent thing to do. And so let's go to our new game. And in here we have an old on goal. So if I click goal, you get like this beautiful little thing, which does absolutely nothing. So, uh, also, let's import the create game. No, let's not create game. So update game to from GraphQL update game. And uh, let's compose it up here at the bottom. So GraphQL and update game. And I'm going to pass it a name of update game. So this is actually all we need to do here at the bottom, which is like super sweet. Apollo is the, the greatest. So now we also get this from the props. We get update game. So instead of goals, let's just pass update game here. So we need to get update game. And what we want to update is the team A score. Uh, so I need to not do this, but this. And update game. And let's think about this. So what do we want to pass in here as an object? So the, the index should be team A score. And the value should be, so value. And this should be the team A score, so let me just parse int the team A score and basically add wanted, right? 
That makes perfect sense, I think. Okay, so if I hit go here, I want. What? Okay, sorry about that. I have to wrap this in variables. So variables are these. And I do need to return an object anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I need to pass it inside of the variables. So if I hit goal now, we get team score one. So this is exactly what I passed to it, right? Okay, cool. So let me just copy and paste this and put it in here and update this to team B score so that we get goals. Let me come here to the index again. And now we actually have to create a mutation. So what do we need to do? Okay, so we need to read the cache, basically. So we can actually read the cache that we have um, with a certain query. So the query that we want is actually the query that we have at get current game. So let me just copy over this query, which is very impressive, I know. Okay, let me just, there we go. So I'm gonna come here. And the first thing that I'm going to do in this mutation is uh, get query. And this query is going to be equal to this. So GQL needs to be imported. So import GQL from the GraphQL tag. Not done. Okay, there we go. So this is an error. That is fine. I don't care. So const query is equal to this. In here, we actually need to give it a name. So I'm going to also call it cur get, get current game. So get current game. Let me just fix this. OK, and now we have a query. And now we need to read this query from the cache. So how do we do that? So we create something like const previous state, state and call cache that we already have, because we get it from over here, we get the cache, that read query. Actually, the names are very self-explanatory, which is something that I truly, truly appreciate. And I'm going to pass it the query. And now let's just give it a little whirl and console.log the previous state. Let's wait for this to reboot. And when I click go, I get the current game. So I get team base score, and I get this. Beautiful, right? Okay. So let's merge these things together, right? Okay, so let's create a const data. I'm just gonna console.log this all the way. So a const data is gonna be what we're actually gonna write to the cache, basically. And this const data is equal to the uh, how did I call it up here? Current game. Okay. It's equal to current game no not here. Game and in current game, what we want to do is basically um, spread over all of the previous state. So, previous state that current game. We also want to spread over all the previous state here. So, previous state. Uh, there we go. And here I want to spread over the previous state that game, that, that current game. And in here I want to pass the index that I got and assign it to the value that I got. Makes perfect sense, right? Doesn't it? Okay, so I'll go through this again once I actually do something. So I received current game, and now the team A score is one. Beautiful. Okay, so let's open up new game again. And what I did was pass an index that is the name of team B score and a value that is basically team B score plus one, because you can only score one goal at a time, as far as I'm concerned. I was never that good at soccer, so maybe you don't. And the reason why I'm showing you this first is because I think this is like this is something that you're going to use a lot. So get the previous state and update it. So the first thing that we do is get the current game. So basically we from the cache with this query that is get get current game and we return everything except the type name. Uh, we actually should return the type name. So type name. So now we get all the things, guys. All of the things. So if I click goal now, we also get the type name. Exactly. So we return all of the things from it. And then we get the previous state by reading this query from the cache that we already have. And we create the data. And with the data, we spread over the previous state. We create a current game object. And then we spread over the, the current game in the previous state. And 
we just basically put in our index and our value. So team A score and our value that is one. Okay. So that's cool and all. And now we have to actually write to the cache. So cache that's write data. And what we want to write is our query data. So in here, we pass it two things. We pass the query that we gave it, and then we pass it the data that we want to set. So that is the new one. And as you can see, it updates. Isn't that beautiful? Is it? I am not sure. OK, so next thing, let's just already fix this, which is the unchanged name. So basically, what I want to do on the unchanged name is pretty similar to what we did over here. But we pass it team a name. And the value is, since it's typing in a thing, is e.target the value. I'm going to copy all of this. This is lacking space. And I'm going to, nope, nope, almost screw this one up. And in here is going to be the same thing. So e.target the value, and this is team B name. If I reload the page, and I think, OK, cool. And let's just take a look at our queries like this one, which is the Apollo new game. This one we can run. So this is the current game. And we get all the data that we see. Also get loading, network status, and stay. OK, cool. So what do we need more? <clears throat> well, we actually need to finish the game. That would be like a super sweet thing for us to do, right? Well, this is actually has nothing to do with the polling state. So let's get it on. So let me go to the new game. And this button needs to do something. So on click, I want to go to this, that, create game. This function does not exist yet. But I already have the create game thing. And this is a mutation that will run on GraphQL and not us. So it's fine. By us, I mean the local state. And basically what I do is pass it all these things, pass it all these things, and return all of the things. So pretty straightforward. If it isn't pretty straightforward, uh, let me know in the comments or on Twitter or anything, and I'll create an Apollo one. That makes more sense. So new game. So let me create this function. This is why this is not a. Okay, so create game. And the first thing that I want to do is just console.log. So create game. There we go. So let me see if this console.logs anything. Console. Blah. There we go. OK. So let's import it, the create game. And let's do the same thing that we did at, at this one. So GraphQL and create game. And I'm going to pass it to name of create game. I'm going to close this. I also need to pass it in this. And I'll close this. And there we go. So now we also get a create game here. And that's the first thing that we need to do. So first thing, get it from the props. Uh, there we go. So create game will const create game will be gotten from this dot props. OK, cool. Uh, and what do we want to do? We want to pass it the current game. And the current game is already set on the props as well. So what is wrong with this? Oh, OK. So we also want to get current game. Current game pretty much has everything. <clears throat> so we're going to be fine with all we said. Uh, and now I just need to create a game. So try. I'm going to use try and catch just so that um, we can use a wait. So catch air. And so I'm going to create some state. So state is going to be equal to create, not like this, so like this. So create it false, error false. So that's done. And in here, I'm just going to this that set state and error true. Maybe not with a comma, but OK. OK, so now let's create the game. So await. This is actually an async function that I forgot to say. Async. 
and now we just gotta await create game and in this create game we gotta pass it the variables and the variables are pretty straightforward because basically we already have all of them so cur current game and that's it after this we just set the state from created true so let's say created true and I want to show a couple of things so basically I want to import these two alerts that is success and error so let me come here to the new game and import success and error from alerts and uh, I want to come here and say so error that comes from the state so error and error and success is the same thing success and cost error success uh, equals this that's the okay so let's see if this actually works okay so that sounds like a fair trade all right oh yeah let's see if this actually works so let me put in some fantasy tornado widows looks nice the other one is obviously gonna call sharknado sharknado and kind of went back four three so five three whatever and i'm gonna click game finished and now i gotta wait a bit uh yeah it went to graph cool it returns oh because it said it the name created no yeah created yeah because i screwed up on this one so it's created created uh, I'm never gonna get a better name than that one. That is horrible. So, okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so this is blew up. Fighting tornadoes and what was the other one? Cyborg Slayers. Okay, cool. Cyborg Slayers. So f Cyborg Slayers gonna win by two one. Now I'm gonna go and game created. Go back to the home page, and in the home page, I get. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I get where tornadoes. Fighting Tornadoes and Cyborg Slayers. So as you can see, that totally worked. Let's create a new one, just to make sure. So American Champions uh, versus Canada Champions. And I prefer Canada, I'm sorry, America. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go game finished. It went there. So Canada Champions wins. Okay, so this is not a perfect tutorial in any way at all. And oh, actually, I want to show you something else. So we can actually very easily create a mutation that what it basically does is reset the current game. So we're not going to actually use it, but I'm going to show you how to actually create a resolver here. So we have this huge ass mutation, and I want to create one that's set called reset current game. So then you can see how easy it is to actually reset to the default state if you ever need it. So this gets exactly the same thing, and we're going to return something. Okay, cool. And this also gets something here that we are, we also don't need. So it's going to get to the and we get to cash. And what do we want to do when we reset the current state? All that we really want to do is write the default state. So all you need to do is cash the write data. And you don't even need to pass it a query. All you need to pass it is the data. So it is default state. And that is all that you need to do. And you got yourself a pretty nifty little thing okay so this is by no means like a full-on blown stuff that works great in every browser but this is just to get you an idea of how this can work and how you can actually make this work in a very very simple manner without very without a lot of tricks and without installing anything else so hope you guys enjoy this and i'll see you next time